Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're going to explore Phoenix Point, a tactical simulator just like XCOM from Julian, one of uh, the creators of uh, the main uh, or original XCOM title. So I'm quite looking forward to see how well this game is going to stack up with XCOM 2. We are going to do an entire blind playthrough, so I've seen zero guides, nothing, no ability, uh, no ability reviews, not even uh, real in-game footage other than the trailer. And we're going to play with almost all of the DLCs enabled. The only thing that I've done so far, you can see that on continue, is essentially test the game, uh, which is me yeah, playing for five minutes to not be completely in the dark when it comes to the UI. But I haven't even played a mission so far, nor have I really tried anything else. Of course, we're going to play the game Psychon style, which means legend only. Uh, that is the best way of learning a game, getting your ass handed to you. We got the living weapon, blood and titanium, le legacy of the ancient DLC. And the ones that were poorly rated, <clears throat> I have not downloaded, so this should include pretty much the newest version of the game on a new PC. So off we go and let's jump into the game. I'm excited. Bear with me as I will need to read through a lot of uh, the uh, content, but that gives us an opportunity to learn it together, in case you have not seen The Phoenix Project was founded on October 24th, 1945. The Second War to end all wars was over, but there were those who understood that we could no longer afford to think in terms of nations and empires. For a time, the Phoenix Project successfully navigated the political conflicts of its era. That was our golden age. Phoenix Project operatives scoured the world for clues. We had bases in two dozen countries. Even the heavens were not off limits. But out there, on the far side of the moon, began our downfall. The failure of the Phoenix 2 mission exposed us to our enemies in the UN. Stripped of resources and scattered to the winds, we were reduced to a secret, a memory. When the Pandora virus woke up, we should have been the first line of defense. When huge clouds of mist appeared over the sea, when people started vanishing, we should have figured out what was going on. And when those people started coming back, changed, hostile, alien, we should have been ready to fight, but we failed. The ecosystem started to change, imperceptibly at first, then faster and faster. Three factions arose, New Jericho, trying to restore order and purity. Sinedrin, hoping to build a world without hierarchies. And the Disciples of Anu, a new syncretic religion dedicated to adaptation and biological change. At war with the world and at odds with each other, these factions cannot find a way forward. Now the mist is returning and armies are rising from the sea. Without the Phoenix Project, Humanity will fall. It's time to rise from the ashes. Wow, that is steep. Cool, we got the Geoscape, as with the original XCOM, or UFO, Enemy Unknown, I should rather say when I say original. Nice, I like the little star uh, constellations that you that you can see as reflections good so we do have tech apparently a high-tech building resource we got materials so general construction and we got food i have no idea how we're getting more of it but that seems okay for now we got one base and that's about it research labs one Four soldiers out of eight. No vehicles, one aircraft, and about half of our storage. Cool. Complete 
the research of atmospheric analysis. Let's maybe start with research. We have only one available, 13 hours to get that one done. We got a couple of Pandorans already uh, researched. Poison worm, living drone, okay. Mist sentinel, large colonized structure, spreads over land. Okay, mind fragger, specimen capable of assuming control of a person. Hmm, creatures able to leap great distances in order to attach themselves to the head and take control. Okay, well, um, we've, I think, already found our primary target. Arthans, human uses claws to take in close combat. Okay, stranglers, forearms and heightened perception, generally weak. A creature can use upper appendages to drain blood from opponents. Uh, good, we won't want to go into melee. Pedora Nest, developed with the ability structure on land, capable of breeding. Okay, not sure if uh, that will be in combat or if it's just kind of fluff. Hatchman Sentinel, ability to uh, detect invaders and trigger X nearby. Killing all Sentinels neutralizes colony. Poison Worm. Claim that if disturbed, pot will break, releasing the creature inside. Okay. And then mind fragger X. Good. It always helps to read the um, the research. I actually can suggest doing that in XCOM 2 as well. So let's see. This is our base. We got a research lab for all research projects. Okay, cool. Apparently we can turn power on and off. That's not bad either. We got a fabrication plant. Allows us to create weapons and armor. Okay. Medical bay, that will be important because I will mess things up. Storage, we got sufficient at the moment. Energy generator, access lift, deployment mission, uh, deployment for defense mission. Okay, that's not bad. I would have built it potentially towards the edge, but okay. This is our vehicle bay. Can have two aircrafts in it. Currently one. Of course, build it in a way that we can't build a second one. So and we got to deal with what we do have. We could build a second one up here. So I should keep that space and living quarters. Soldiers will recover two stamina point per hour in the living quarters. That's good because I assume this will reduce fatigue. Scans, uh, scans the area around locating sites of interest. Okay, Pandoran colonies attacking havens within scanning range will be instantly detected. What it does, doesn't tell me is whether or not I could have a second one. In terms of building stuff, you could build more living quarters. We could generate more energy which we currently don't need we're at 11 out of 20 access lift don't need that and more storage so the only thing that really makes sense is living quarters for faster recovery i think i'll do one because we had resources and that actually seems to make sense now let's come to the personal we have a few characters here and that's what i have looked into a bit so to not be completely blindsided this here is our heavy these here are assaults nice mustache by the way okay and this is our sniper first things first let me customize these guys good so we are back I went a bit into the detailing and uh, I also figured I'll just use a few of our viewers uh, that are most active in the comment section 
incentivize uh, each of the other viewers to maybe do so as well if you're active in the comments i would draft you for new games there wasn't really any pool so far so i'll just add people that are active in the comments we got shattered realm here as our heavy we got ian owens also known as the butcher he is an assault he was uh, one of many who wished Phoenix Point to be uh, played. We got Jaranks because you always need a Jaranks in each of your squads. And we got Dilly G as our sniper. Now, after we have brought the names to them, now the more in uh, interesting part. There are actually quite quite a few uh, things to, uh, to consider. Number one, all of uh, these armor parts do have armor uh, surprisingly but as you can see the armor parts uh, also do have self accuracy impacts etc etc so heavies do suffer from accuracy but they do have a jump jet which seems like an awful handy ability now there is a lot of golem b armor and I'm wondering, can we get something better? Uh, the Golem B armor, you definitely can uh, create these things. But apparently that's our standard armor for now. So we have to, uh, we have to just use that, no surprise here. We do have a few other uh, kind of armor uh, sets just a little bit of a different look as far as i'm concerned but they are all completely equivalent what is not equivalent is the guns we have these hell 2 cannons that deal 200 points of damage versus the auto cannon uh, that only deals 60 points of damage both cost three action points the hell cannon however has only an effective range of 17 the autocannon 20. I don't know how much that is yet. The hell cannon is a little bit heavier. But I'm wondering why wouldn't you just use that cannon? Well, not that cannon. This looks like a lollipop from uh, from a Christmas leftover. But that cannon here, for instance, looks much better. So the other thing that I've already found out is there is a skill point I think that's what SP stands for and you do have three attributes strength determines hit points and carry capacity which we can see here willpower is used for abilities I have no idea how good or bad that is and speed is just how fast someone can move that indeed is quite good now the heavy seems to struggle a bit with the strength uh, strength because the magazine here just barely is uh, carryable by the heavy. How many shots do we have? Weigh two, six ammunition. Well, that's 12 shots, but it's 200 damage each. Oh, that's a lot of damage. I think we're going to go with that. We have a limited ammunition. And as and when that runs out we might even be able to uh, to melee attack there are a couple of other things uh, grenades for instance but it seems that the assaults are kind of more uh, more the grenade types so we do have odin armor well, that seems to be the absolute standard 20 20 20 that means we're clocking 60 armor can i see an armor rundown for that character i would love a few more stats to be honest okay we can't see an armor rundown uh, this armor here is a bit lighter but it gives an accuracy bonus now i've no idea if this here is as bad as xcom but if it is then Maybe the Flagitan armor might be a better a better choice. We're giving up six armor out of sixty. That's ten percent less, but we're getting 
10% more accuracy. Hmm. You apparently can also mix and match. I don't know if there are set bonuses. But the helmet itself only loses two armor but gives six accuracy. That by itself is a really, really nice trait. This year, legs lose two armor for two accuracy. And here we do have 20 armor as opposed to 20. Well, that's a straight upgrade. There you go. Legs have speed, same speed. Okay, bit of a different way, but not even that. I think the whole accuracy thing might be help, might really be helpful for us. So other than that, we do have a normal assault rifle, 30 damage. Burst of six. Oh, now I see. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, these, this cannon here has three shots, it's 180 versus one shot of 200. Okay, but it shreds 20 armor and apparently deals shock. Single shot, uh, single shot. I have no idea what shock means, but we'll, we're, we'll figure that out. These guns here can be shot with two action points. Apparently this game is at least three action uh, units. And has 36 M ammo bursts of six means six shots pretty much a similar weapon as the other uh, as uh, the heavier one and it would be six times three is 180 points of damage as well but lower base damage so i assume armor will be better against that I'm just making wild assumption that armor uh, just takes takes away damage what I'm trying to mimic here by just going through that is if you start a new strategy game, try to understand the basics and just get familiar with the stats, I suppose. So we do have 30 damage here as well, but a higher effective range and a higher ammunition capacity, which per definition I already like. So that is 10 shots. Plus another 10, that's 20 shots. Okay, we don't seem to have much of a carry weight issue. Med kits might come in handy. But before we do that, let's take a second grenade. We don't have any mounts apparently. I think that's maybe a, a modification to the armor. And I must say the armor looks absolutely fantastic. Giving him the blue gun. Yeah, and there's no point of, I think, not going with as much ammunition as you can. So that seems good. Drinks, same deal here. Sup, sup, and uh, what went wrong? Oh, I see. Maybe the armor. There we go. The armor is lighter. Cool, so gotta get used to that Tron-like look. Can we... No. Well, that already... The armor kind of overrides your color code, I guess. Cool, finally, Dilly G. So what kind of snipers do we have? Only Firebrand. Can we manufacture a better sniper? Damage 100. What is his sniper currently doing? 110. 8 shots, 50 effective range. And we could...
That looks like an assault rifle. Interesting assault rifle. And this here looks like a machine gun. Bursts of 10. For 35, well that is 350 points of damage. Hmm, that looks like a good weapon. With you run, um, with you run shots. This here is single shot. Action points needed three. I don't understand why you would not go for this here. It's more damage. Yeah, it's just straight up better. Okay. So, he does have the Banshee armor. Can we manufacture something better? Banshee helmets. No, I think that's already the best that we can do. Armored fighting vehicle, that looks nice. And a Mandicore. I think we're going to save the rest of our of our funds for now. We do have single shots, eight plus eight, that is more than enough. But I think we can definitely require one more med kit. And how about those grenades? Good, two grenades for... Ah, does the sniper really need grenades? Potentially not. I would say rather another med kit. And now we're really, really... Out. Good, no extra ammunition for the pistol, but that's okay. Okay, fantastic. Well, that was uh, that took quite some time. We had looked at research, got that. We have looked at manufacturing, got that. We have uh, no diplomacy yet. And there is a bit of a guide. Let me shortly read through that. Good, that was quite insightful. So the TLDR, we have three core attributes, strength, speed and willpower, strength, hit points and carry capacity, speed, is what it says movement speed willpower for special abilities perception is influenced by lighting condition accuracy um, it can be modified by armor and stealth is irrelevant for us for now that's what i picked up everyone in, in initially gets individual experience points and a joint skill point and apparently on level four you can get into a different class then standard damage and blast damage. Blast damage allows um, to hit all body parts generally. Armor on each body part is separately calculated. So if a body part is hit, the damage uh, that is incoming minus armor equals actual damage. Every single shot reduces armor and automatic weapons therefore against like heavily armored targets are not as good as like one shot uh, big uh, damage. There is a, quite a bit of different damage types. Uh, shock, poison damage, which stacks up. Uh, paralysis, apparently that's a damage type in order to capture aliens. Virus damage. Then shred damage uh, is what I mentioned. Pierce damage directly goes through. Psychic damage apparently is another one. And then there are a lot of status effects. I try to memorize most of them. In a nutshell, uh, uh, the, the worst ones are paralyzed because you can't do anything, tired and exhausted, uh, because you take minus one action point per turn and minus or minus two action points per turn if you don't have enough stamina, which kind of disincentivizes using the same people over and over. And then a couple of other uh, topics, panic was clear. Bleeding and burning as and virus can be cured. Elsewise, they continue to stack up every single round and deal damage. And once you have zero hit points, your character dies. 
And that's pretty much it. Uh, that was quite helpful to understand. Now we're through all of the basics. Uh, we have built most of the stuff and our objective is to do that atmospheric analysis, which we already have done. This is our base and we have a few unexplored sites, which I would say we're going to one. Let's explore it. At the disciple of Anu Haven Sapinuava, a mutated worm infestation is causing serious problems. The local have placed their hopes on the Taxian Ner Nergal, the disciple's greatest military hero, but Nergal is said to be fighting a series of pitch battles against the Pandorians and has been unable to help. We could eradicate the infestation ourselves, helping the Haven, and creating a good first impression. Well, uh, I would say we're starting the mission. Squad people used four out of eight. All items will automatically be recovered. Kill all enemies is the idea. Shattered Realm, Ian Owens, Dranks and Dilly G look as ready as you can be for now. So let's deploy the squad and give it a go. Okay, so we just landed. We got Dilly G, our sniper here, Dranks, Shadow Realm, and uh, Ian the Butcher Owens. Not sure what exactly that means. Looks like an evac zone, but it also says kill all aliens. Assuming that there are aliens here. I wonder, is that too aggressive? The answer is yes, so I can yes. Okay, we're heading for cover here. Can't really use anything roll. else for now. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we do have four action points. Half cover, full cover. I like the full cover. Let's but do it this. Seems Here they are. It seems we're fighting against melee units. Moving. Holy, well, that's a lot of melee units. Here comes the Phoenix. I want to stand in the open, but it seems as if we do not have a lot of alternatives. Moving to coordinates. Okay, so free aim. one that was our first kill like it can Dilly see someone or something wait we could hit the machine Ooh, okay. Well, that is an interesting feature. There are propane tanks over here. 
Let's see if they explode. We did have a worm back there, right? Yeah, we did. And there are quite a few propane tanks. Well, the propane tank did disappear, but I was honestly speaking hoping for a real explosion. Hmm, a bit disappointing. Let's try the whole Overwatch shtick. Okay, did not deal any damage, did it? Okay, Overwatch is just really just one shot. Wait, 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 wait. Are we witnessing? Okay. Well, Shattered Realm has a problem here. One, two, three. Ranks moves a little bit closer. Let's start with the guys back to front. Here's a little trick I know. Okay, so apparently a grenade would still work, but it's not really what we need at the moment. Let's blast them. Scratch one. That was only a partial hit. Unfortunate. to here killing that war and I think Advancing. Dilly will slowly but surely be on the way to get that high ground ready oh oh we can hit uh, the big guy well I'll think about it. Quite a few poison worms left. Don't know if they have enough movement. I've got this. Uh, launches multiple poison worms over a long range. Uh, that's not good. Bleeding 30 if we hit here. Damage 5, shock 120. If we hit the torso, uh, we got max hit points minus 200 and bleeding 10. Oh, cool. Each leg is minus 100. The torso has 30 armor. The head has zero armor. Let's try go going for the head. Yeah. Not enough action points. How? How? Why? Oh, 
Oh, because I already moved once. Well, no. in that case, let's reload. That was pretty poor. Don't want to stand in the open, uh, but I think we're actually okay here. Poison worms haven't really done much yet, other than slithering in. Yeah, I figured that something, something like that would happen. Ready to rock. But that's why we got the assaults, right? We can continue shooting over and over and over. All right, free aim. This should be exactly what a sniper wants to do. Dilly, you let us down. Okay, didn't work out, not as planned. guy drinks could go even a bit further how many shots does he have left shred value I think it's now nah, that uh, these are the action points. Hover over. How much ammunition? Action points. Oh yeah, sixty. Easy peasy. Um, yeah, we could go over here. Be a bit more aggressive. Not sure if I like the idea though. Here comes the Phoenix. Okay, so clearly one of I'm the in. disadvantages of just having one shot is target missed. That you're Highly incentivized to not miss your target. That's unfortunate. There's no hunker down or anything. Oof. 
Good, so Jarenx has taken some poison damage. <sighs> and is now continuing to take poison damage. Which means he's starting to heal himself. Cool, well, that's good. That worked out well. Perfect shot. Ready to rock. Ian has a really good position back here. I'm quite happy with how he is doing. I think Shattered Realm needs to be able to hit that big guy. Really not a good chance of hitting, like... Need to take a second weapon with him for the next time. This here would give him half cover. We don't have enough action points left over with Dilly. I think we should rather get the full cover here and the better line of sight. Yeah, I think that's worth it. Good gracious, that cannon is really only good for melee or very close range. Okay, should have moved back. second med kit no we did not moving back here on my way Good investment with a medkit, so I like that. Good investment to have that sidearm, I like that as well. In my sights. Adding one more to the list. Okay, we're currently hmm. Slightly being overrun here. So we got surely we're moving forward. <laughs> it's another miss. But his armor, Shattered Realm's armor, seems to prevent him from the poison. So he's actually a pretty good frontline. 
for us. What's our move? Ready to rock. But we still need to reload. And I feel we're running. Yeah, we're running out of ammunition. Not bad, not bad. That solved some of the problems. Rolling. Moves up. And I would like to free aim. Yeah, that torso. Right on top. Preparing to fire on target. Did we get the head? Did we kill it? Let's go. So wait a second. Can I shoot and then move? Yes, I can. That's actually quite helpful. It's a bit strange because XCOM like forces you to be in cover the entire time. Here the, the whole ordeal is a bit different. Free aim. Couple of hits, I like that. In my sights. Ah, uh, we don't really have a great target there. One move over here. And continuing to try to hit at it. aim target hit nice nice this time we got a really good hit in and some more overwatch Okay, well, um, yeah, the situation changed a bit. Reloading. Reload. Aiming. <laughs> nice, disabled torso. It's dazed. Dazed means it loses every uh, action point except one. Taking the high ground here. I get the sense that I'm doing this wrong. Can't be. That cover is not important. Ready to rock. Oh, 
Yay. Alright, that was... That was an exciting mission and equally... Uh, yeah, just incredibly rewarding. Uh, first impression is... It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Dranks has gotten quite a bit of experience for taking so much damage. Ian got a lot, potentially by killing those little worms. And we got two level ups. General mission experience and kill all animal, animal, uh, animals, yeah, enemies. Cool. Very good. Let's do the level up and then it's a good time to end the first episode. That was indeed quite rewarding. Normally when we encounter a potential ally, we first send the Apostle to the Onceborn to check them out. But I'm gonna break protocol to say thanks. Now listen, I'll be honest with you. The Exalted is the only one who has any real answers. Tobias West may be clever and Sinedrian may sound great, but only the Exalted is dealing with the world as it actually is. She can lead us out of this mess. Give us lives worth living. Uh, we'd like to know more. If you want to work with us, you'll still have to deal with the hierarchy. Work your way up from the Apostle to the Onceborn, to the Keeper of the Threshold, all the way up to the Synod of Yearning and the Exalted herself. That's hard work. You'll have to earn the knowledge you gain. But trust me, it'll be worth it. And if the Synod gives you trouble, let me know. Okay. So wait, we need to... replenish all of those items? Holy... Okay. I sincerely hope materials are going to replenish because that is something. Not being able to reuse uh, to reuse that stuff. Not good. Okay, so here we would with uh, research we would get bonus effects. Okay, cool. Personal level up. Uh, we have dash. Move up to half of your movement range. Cost one action point. Limit two uses per turn. Then the soldier still has SP, which means we can do a few more things. Um, I can already see strength is important because everything costs weight capacity, but willpower potentially is important as well because we won't be uh, we will, I want to use actual uh, abilities. Good, so here we have a few more things. Close quarters specialist, cost 25. Gain shotgun proficiency with 20% accuracy and uh, melee weapon proficiency with 20% damage. I like that. Is this a special ability? It's one that Ian doesn't, doesn't have. Additional plus two to willpower and 10 perception at range. Wow, that is really good. The dash is also not bad. Hmm. Well, those special abilities, they are not bad at all, but I wouldn't have enough, to, uh, enough SP to do dash as well. The shotgun proficiency sounds great. And melee proficiency also sounds great. But I think this here might be the best out of all of them. Just steady backline 
shots, two willpower, and ten perception at range. That will give us better odds to shoot. This here, however, is also quite good. I think we're go just going to go with the standard for now. I like that. And increase the, st the stats a bit more. Because more hit points is also needed. Jarenks almost died just to two poison worms. So I can see that this is going to be tough. Bit more willpower here. And a bit more willpower here. Strength. Do we need to carry more? Tell you what, yes, because I want ammunition for the sidearm. Cool. That's the end of today's episode, uh, guys. If you are enjoying uh, Phoenix Point, then point your cursor right to the like button because that's where it belongs. Click it and see you in the next episode. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.